Hello everyone and welcome back to Rail Transit Improvements, where I plan new ways to improve transit connections across whatever city I feel like talking about today. And today we're going to one of the most overlooked and underrated cities in the entire state of Colorado, Pueblo. Yes, the southernmost city on the Front Range, if you consider it a Front Range city, Pueblo has a lot of really beautiful old buildings and a lot of heritage and culture. It is definitely an underrated city. Today I've designed a streetcar network that would connect a lot of the areas of historic Pueblo together, mainly downtown and Mesa Junction, but also the east side, as well as some major sites for transit-oriented development. Now the first thing you'll see is the two lines. There's the yellow colored line one and the orange red colored line two. Of the two lines, I think the one that is most feasible to be built in the near future is this or something along the lines of a line one. Pueblo as a city could take inspiration from Oklahoma City and how Oklahoma City was able to build a streetcar of pretty similar length on a pretty reasonable budget and honestly the Oklahoma City streetcar has been a massive success for that city. I think something similar could be done here in Pueblo. So let's get started with the route, which starts at the far west by Dutch Clark Stadium. This is the Aberdeen East Station. This station would serve the Dutch Clark Stadium as well as the Aberdeen neighborhood. And I also laid out this land that is currently dedicated to parking lots for the stadium could also be developed into a mixed-use transit-oriented development. Heading along the line from Aberdeen East is Mesa Junction North Station which would serve a lot of these neighborhoods that are pretty walkable, as well as some site for development as well. And then past that, the line diverges into the section on the loop. Now the loop it goes clockwise, so the trains will go this way and then up and then back down this way. So the next station is Library at Union, but then there's also the counterpart station for the trains heading southbound, library at Maine. Then heading up and crossing the Arkansas River, we get into downtown. Next is railway at Union or railway at Maine, which would connect into the Pueblo Union Depot as well as the front range passenger rail when that is completed. Next is the river walk at Union or river walk at Maine station connecting into the Historic Arkansas River Walk. This is a major walkable area and one of the main destinations of downtown Pueblo. Past that, we go to Central Station, uh, Central at Main, and Central at Court are the two twin station platforms on each street here. I also laid out this area of a large section of the area around this station that could be redeveloped. And past that, we go to 8th Street and Court and 8th Street and Main, another area where there's a lot of parking lots and pretty low density structures and development built out here in downtown Pueblo. I think that uh, a station like this would serve a lot of these areas that could be redeveloped into uh, new developments, new apartments, and just higher density, prioritizing transit. And let's go next to Government Center at Court or Government Center at Main. And this would connect into the Pueblo County Courthouse building, which is an absolutely beautiful structure, as well as future development once again on the site of a lot of these parking lots and pretty much empty land. And then the final stop on the line one is here, Mineral Palace Station, which is next to uh, the Mineral Palace and Northern Neighborhoods, as well as the Mineral Palace Park and the Parkview Hospital. So yeah, like I've said before, line one could totally be built in the near future or something along the lines of this if the Oklahoma City streetcar is taken as an example. So let's then move on to line two, which is a four mile long line that through downtown Pueblo heads east-west instead of north-south. And it starts here at the site of this old midtown shopping center, which could be completely redeveloped into a pretty large area of transit-oriented development. And that will be where the line will start. 
So that's Midtown Center Station. Next, we have Courthouse at Elizabeth Station, serving the new Pueblo Courthouse. Next is the uh, Central Station, where it would link in with the Line 1. And then after that is East Side at 4th Street Station, which will serve a lot of these businesses and neighborhoods at the East Side, as well as areas that could be redeveloped to create more density and more transit-oriented areas. The next station is East Side at 10th, which pretty much the same. It's just a 10th Street instead of 4th, serving this neighborhood. Then there's East Side at 17th, which I think would serve this huge area of what is currently just undeveloped land that could be developed into a huge, dense, transit oriented development served by a very easily accessible streetcar station right here. Then we have Southwest Belmont Station, serving the Belmont neighborhood here, but also linking in with a few trails along Fountain Creek here. And then finally, we get to what I plan as the largest area of transit-oriented development in the city of Pueblo, the Fountainside Development, which is this large area of pretty much unused land in the south, and in the north used by old retail that I don't think will last much longer. I haven't been to the Pueblo Mall in at least 10 years, but I just don't see it lasting uh, several decades into the future. I think this would be a great site to be redeveloped and turned into a more livable, more walkable community. And this area is pretty huge. That's 118 acres here, 40 acres here, and 80 acres here, as well as a large area that could be a central kind of park to this new development, as well as a uh, pedestrian bridge. I should add that as well. And the Line 2 will serve Fountainside at South, Central, and North Station, allowing easy transfer and riding between any of these sections of this large new transit-oriented development. Once again, this whole network is just a fantasy concept, though I think there are elements that could be built in real life, mainly having to do with Line 1, connecting large sections of downtown Pueblo together to make the city more walkable and more accessible without a car. I guess the last thing I should talk about is the rail alignments for these two lines, so let's just go through that. Uh, we're going to start with the Line 1, which starts here at Aberdeen East Station, and it basically runs through the center of Abriendo Avenue here, and I think it would be possible to uh, preserve all of these trees and the greenery in the middle while also running the train down it, or if not, uh, one lane from each direction of car traffic on Abriendo Avenue could now be dedicated to the streetcar. And that continues down to where the train turns onto Union Avenue, uh, here, one lane of Union Avenue will be now dedicated to the streetcar, and that will make Union Avenue a one-way, and then Main Street, it will be one lane uh, dedicated to the streetcar, but this, the street will remain one lane in both directions for car traffic. And that's pretty much how it is, up Union and Main, and then it continues on to Court, where a lot of the street parking could be removed, and then in that place put the streetcar. Continues all the way up, and then the line will run onto the Veltri Circle in the Mineral Palace Park here, do kind of a loop, and then you'll have the Mineral Palace Station here on the east side of Court Street, on the site that is currently just uh, street parking. That's line one. Line two will run through a new dedicated area in Midtown and then turn on to the north side of 4th Street. 4th Street will be halved and now instead of two lanes each way for car traffic, it will be just one lane each way and all the freed up space will now be dedicated to the streetcar. And that's pretty much how it goes all the way along 4th Street to the east side after that, Line 2 turns north onto Hudson Avenue. Here, it will run in the middle of Hudson Avenue. There will be one lane for cars in each direction. Continues like this all the way up Hudson Avenue. 
It will then turn onto Highway 50 and kind of run through this center area. A lot of lanes would need to be moved over one, and you'd probably lose a turn lane here, but that would be totally all right. And then that would allow the train to go this way, and then on a bridge it will kind of branch off from Highway 50 and then go north along the train tracks here, but then turn as it goes up to a line along Dillon Drive through the fountain side transit oriented development. Overall the alignments show that this whole network could be built on a pretty reasonable budget as most of the land that these trains would take up is currently just dedicated to roads and simple traffic rerouting and road diets could easily free up the space needed to put in a network like this. Also Pueblo being a small city under 150,000 people it would be very interesting to have a city with a transit network like this being as small as it is, that would be definitely a first in the United States. I also like the concept of planning transit for smaller or mid-sized cities such as Pueblo because a lot of the densest and most transit accessible areas of the city are all in one area, and a streetcar network could really just bring the whole area together, and it would be possible to build a network like this much cheaper than what you could see in a large city. Though I do think the designation and construction of dense, walkable, transit-oriented developments in clearly defined spaces such as here, here, or here, is a great way to allow our cities to grow and densify around transit instead of letting them grow and sprawl out into ever-expanding car-centric suburbs. I think Line 1 is a good example of a near-future kind of streetcar that could be built connecting a lot of these areas of downtown Pueblo, and then Line 2 would be an extension in the more distant future connecting transit-oriented development sites to downtown, as well as linking together the whole city and allowing it to be as walkable and transit-accessible as possible. But anyway, that is all I have for today. Let me know if you have any suggestions in the comments below, and stay tuned for the next episode where I plan even more transit somewhere else. Bye.